Hey everyone, James back here. Welcome back to another episode of VGC 17 Back to Back Battles here on the channel today. So if you guys didn't catch my stream, which was earlier today, I highly suggest you follow my Twitch channel. Uh, kind of was a practice stream today and it kind of didn't go so well. We had technical issues in the beginning. I ended up bringing, uh, I didn't check uh, what I was using. Since I grabbed Pokemon out of my box and ended up having the wrong ability for my first one. And then I realized I could have just ability capsuled it right after. So, yeah. So we're going to be fighting Christy from Austria. We got Gengar, Raichu, Metagross, Tapu Lele, Savali, and the Slowbro. So, very interesting team. Very interesting. Um, Kartana's pretty solid against my opponent's teams. Ninetales can do a lot of work. Hmm. Marowak does ex just puts. He doesn't exactly have a switch into Metagross. He has five Pokemon weak to Ghost. Hmm. I think my Lodic's just pretty safe of a lead because my Lodic can tank hits. I have Kartana, Marowak. And I think I'll go Hariyama in case he has Trick Room. Yeah, I like this. This would have actually been a game I brought Porygon 2. I put a uh, Salamence over Porygon 2. Because I said Porygon 2 wasn't really doing any work. I don't think a Ranguru would have been better. I would have liked Intimidate because my Lodic and uh, Kartana would feel safer. So that is the reason why I decided to bring uh, Salamence to the stage. As we actually find a DC. Well, I guess that's going to be free rating points for me, because I didn't in DC right there. Yeah, I didn't. So, um, I'll talk more about the team, I guess. I like Salamence because, it, as I said, the offensive pressure wasn't there earlier with um, Porygon 2. Uh, Hariyama was usually my Z-move user, and I was just never click bring Hariyama much, because Hariyama doesn't do much unless it has a good matchup. As we're going to find Marger, or Marger, however you want to pronounce it. We got Garchomp, Gastrodon, Arcanine, Tapu Koko, Talonflame, and Tapu Bulu. Very interesting team. Uh, my Lodic does pretty solid against my opponent's team. It really does. Like, the combination of Tapu Bulu plus Marowak does fantastic. Okay, so Pokemon do I want to bring? I don't want to bring the Ninetales. I don't see Ninetales doing much of a role other than not count Gastrodon. And if I preserve my Kartana, I think I'll do fine. Hariyama doesn't really help in this matchup. It really just doesn't like hits from Tapu Koko, Tapu Bulu, and Talonflame. So my Lodic seems like a solid lead for me. Honestly, like my Lodic Kartana. Yeah, I like my Lodic Kartana, Marowak, and Salamence in the back. I like having Marowak usually in the back as a Lightning Rod potential switch in. And I want Kartana out because I do threaten the Gastrodon if it decides to lead or switch in. So we'll see how this goes. Pokemon Trainer Marger wants to battle. As we're going to fight with our... Kartana and Milotic and <laughs> Talonflame Arcanine straight off the bat. So we're going to get this competitive boost, which is great. But we will take an intimidate with Kartana, but Kartana does not want to stay in 100%. Um, to be honest, Arcanine is not really a threat unless it carries Wild Charge. I get a free switch into Salamence, I think, because Intimidate would be great. I'll just Ice Beam the Talonflame, I think. Kinda wanna go out into Marowak in case he's banded Arcanine. But I wanna go into Salamence in case it's Supersonic Sky Strike Talonflame. I think Salamence is the better call. We're gonna see Talonflame withdraw most likely into that Gastrodon, which is why I didn't want to click Scald. I could have Leaf Bladed the Gastrodon slot, but I really have no reason not to. No reason to, actually. So we'll get in Salamence, which has Devastating Drake, which after the plus two Ice Beam might be able to obliterate this Gastrodon. 
We'll see what this Arcanine goes for. It's going to be the Flamethrower into the Kartana slot, which is fine. Salamence should be able to eat that up, no problem. As it does. No burn, which is fortunate. We are going to get the Scald off. The Ice Beam off into the Gastrodon. Doing almost half. That's not a counter. And that's the Leftovers Gastrodon. I don't know what his Arcanine could really have. I could go for Devastating Drake here. I don't think it's really worth it. He might just switch out Arcanine, in my opinion, and go out into something like Tapu Koko and Protect. That's what I would do. I'm going to sub up here. I guess the worst case scenario is if he snarls. But we're just going to see the Gastrodon Protect, which makes a lot of sense, to be honest. But this Arcanine can't really do much other than Snarl, but Snarl would boost my Milotic Special Attack even farther. We're just going to see the Flamethrower come out, and it will turn down the Milotic, which is an interesting choice. Not going for will to get a burn, but we will get our Moranga Berry boost activated. No burn, please. Thank you. And we will get the Ice Boom off into the uh, Arcanine in case they wanted to switch. And we get the Freeze. That's unfortunate, but I don't think that matters. Oh, it's actually a Lumberry, so it really didn't matter. I mean, we saw Lumberry, but the only way I was proccing it was an Ice Beam Freeze. And I doubt it's going to happen again, so I don't think it matters too much. A Devastating Drake should knock out the Gastron 100% at this range. But if he has the... If he has um, Tapu Koko in the back, he should switch out Gastrodon into that Tapu Koko. So what I'm going to do is actually double target the Gastrodon with the Z Devastating Drake plus Scald. Because I'll be able to knock out Gastrodon if it stays in. And if he goes into Tapu Koko, I knock it out with the plus 2 Scald, hopefully. It is going to be that Tapu Koko slot, which makes a lot of sense. But again, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to take the plus 2 Scald, unless he's a Soul Fist. We're going to see Arcanine Protect. Okay, doesn't want to take the Skull. Doesn't want to lose Arcanine yet. So, we did waste our Z-move. But again, our Z-move wasn't really necessary. If we got a Gastrodon, that was great for us. But it wasn't a huge waste. We still have our Kartana in the back. And what we do is just get free damage on the Tapu Koko. Yeah, free Skull. Tarning down the Tapu Koko. Yeah. Look at how much damage that did. That's actually insane damage. And I don't see a reason to risk my elements. I mean, my Milotic, because Milotic can win the game. So I'll just Fire Blast the Tapu Koko and Protect. We're going to see the Arcanine withdraw, so I'm guessing it's the... Oh, wow, Talonflame's actually coming back in. So we'll Protect with Milotic. He's not protecting Tapu Koko. Dazzling Gleam? Thunderbolt. Into my Lodic. Yeah, he had to try to get rid of it. Fire Blast does connect with the Tapu Koko, and that was his real answer to my Lodic. He doesn't really have a clean answer now. His Tapu Koko goes down. I don't know what he would want to try to do otherwise. Maybe go out into Arcanine. Like, okay, what I was thinking was go out to Arcanine, try to bait the Scald, go back into Gastrodon. But then, then again, that would have worked against me, so. Yeah, going out into Gashadon is the best play for him. I have no reason not to recover here. And we'll just Draco the Talonflame. Again, Gashadon's not a threat as long as I have my, um... As long as I have my Karton in the back. He's actually going to go for the Tailwind and as I will go for this Draco Meteor into Talonflame. This shouldn't knock it out, but it should do a lot of damage. Probably about 80%. Or that will just obliterate the talent flame. Is that a crit? Or maybe it's naive nature. Maybe this one's carrying the overheat. As talent flame will go down. And we will get this recover off. And I don't really see a way he breaks through this Milotic. Toxic's going to come out. But it's not really going to help him. So yeah, I don't see a way this helps you really. Leftover is going to heal him. And yeah, we get the plus four now that Arcanine is forced to come back in. And the Ice Beam should be doing a clean amount to this Arcanine. Plus four, my Lodic. Ah, uh, my Lodic is such a beast. I 
I should just be... Uh, he should just protect Gashadon anyway, since he knows an Ice Beam would probably go into that slot. So I'll just Ice Beam Draco Meteor the Arcanine. We might see a forfeit here. He can't really win. But we're going to see him never give up. All right. Then we're going to go out into Salamence. I don't mind if Salamence gets knocked out. Salamence has done his job, basically. But he won't be able to break the sub. We will get this Draco Meteor off into the Arcanine. Should do at least 30%, even at minus 2. Yep, right around the money. And we saw it's Lumberry earlier, so... Ice Beam should be able to knock out the Arcanine, as we're going to see the Ice Beam come out from the Gastrodon. As we will get this Ice Beam off into Arcanine. Let's see if this is able to pick up the KO at plus 4. It is. My Lodic is just so strong. Arcanine will go down, and we have Carton in the back. I don't see a way he can win this. He cannot win. Because uh, he doesn't have a Rindo Berry. Yep. So I think we played that pretty well. I don't agree with the double fire lead. It just lost to my Lodic, and he didn't exactly have the best answers. I would have probably led Tapu Koko and maybe Talonflame or maybe Tapu Koko Arcanine. I think that would have been a more solid lead for my opponent. As I'll just switch out my loaded go out into Kartana and I'll just switch out Salamence and go out to Marowak. As the match is going to be forfeited, uh, there was no way for my opponent to win. Once Tailwind was gone, Kartana was guaranteed faster. It might have even been faster after Tailwind. And he had nothing he could do. He didn't have like substitute or anything that could uh, prevent him from going down to Elite Blade. So we had a 100% win condition right there. I think, um, well, the fact that <laughs> plus the Ice Beam did that much to gash it on kind of surprised me. But the fact that he didn't, well, the Tapu Koko was his only offensive pressure really other than Talonflame. But Ta Talonflame just wasted his time going for a Talon while Tapu Koko basically got one. It didn't even get a hit off because I protected that one turn, and he made a switch which might have seemed safe. Might have seemed safe, because so, why wouldn't I just devastate and Drake the Gastrodon and Scald the Arcanine? Pretty safe, but to be honest, since the Gastrodon already protected, it was just safe to double target that slot in case he went for a switch and didn't protect. As we will find one more game. I'm feeling pretty good right now. Feeling really good about my play right now. Uh, Salamence is already putting in the finest of work, which I like. I like Pokemon that actually do work. Never, in your team building, never restrict yourself. If a Pokemon's not doing the job, you're not bringing it, don't feel afraid to replace that slot. That's, it, that's a good advice team building I could give you, because I've done that so many times where I've had a Mon that's, you know, for a good position, it does well against a certain matchup, but I never end up bringing it otherwise. I mean, better off just to replace that Pokemon in general. We're going to find Antonio with the team of Weeball, Braviary, Tapu Koko's Fireworks, uh, <laughs> uh, Kartana, Arcanine, and Salamence. So Milotic does extremely well in this matchup. He doesn't exactly have a way to beat it. I think I could just lead uh, Salamence Milotic, to be honest. It's very safe against him. Uh, yeah, see no reason not to. Have Kartana and Marowak in the back. He can't lead Intimidate against me unless he wants to give me a competitive boost. I will get to lead my Salamence, which will intimidate the Kartana, which is the only thing that can knock me out, or the um, Tapu Koko. But I do have my Marowak in the back to withdraw, redirect any electric type attacks other than Discharge, but I don't think he has Discharge on his team. So we're going to see Weebob Rabiary come out. Ah, that's a bit unfortunate for me. Because I did at least Salamence my Lodic. And we actually just gave this Braviary Defiant. I forgot that Braviary gets Defiant as its ability. Which, if its stack gets lowered by your opponent, you actually gain a plus 2 attack rise. So he's at plus 1 right now. To be honest, I could just Devastating Drake, but I don't want to lose my Salamence. I'll just go out into Marowak since I think it's safe. And I'll go for the Skull into Braviary. We could see a Fake Out Tailwind right here. We could see uh, just an Icicle Crash Brayburn maybe? I don't know if he would Brayburn straight off the bat. We will just see the Icicle Crash though, which makes sense. Gonna go out into the Marowak. I would probably see the Tailwind here, but he could just go for the Brayburn. Oh, that does a lot. Oh, it's a crit, that's why. 
We're actually faster than the Braviary with our Milotic, so we will get the Skull off. If we get a burn, that would be great. We actually do get the burn, which is huge. Oh, it was plus one Z move. So we're going to see the Supersonic Sky Strike come out. I, To be honest, I've never seen the Braviary really do this. Unless, maybe it was on the previous episode. But I've mostly seen Sash, Tailwind, on Braviary. Because it's not that bulky. But we're going to see the Supersonic Sky Strike come out. This is going to do a lot to my Lodic. Even Burned, he is at like only minus one. Yeah, that did a lot. Uh, we could just protect Marowak here, though, and go for a Recover. Yeah, I think Recover is just a safe play. We might see a Tailwind. We might see a Throw Chop uh, Brave Bird. But I think I'm fine with that. Throw Chop is going to go out into Marowak, and we will get this Recover off from the Milotic. So we should be able to live a Brave Bird. Let's see if Tailwind comes out. Yep. Now one is going to come out. Smart play by my opponent. Hmm. Alright, Throw Chop's not going to do much to my Kartana. And I need to keep my Marowak in case he does have Kartana plus um, Tapu Koko in the back. I'll just go for the Ice Beam into Braviary. We're actually going to see Revolve withdraw, which is interesting. So I won't take any damage with unnecessary damage with my um, we won't take any unnecessary damage with my uh, Kartana, which is nice. Unless he Brave Birded the uh, Marowak slot, which I kind of doubt to be honest. We'll see the Brave Bird come out. It might be targeting down the Kartana. Who knows? It actually is the Kartana slot. Yeah, I want to knock down Marowak, so I'm kind of questioning it. Maybe he was trying to put it in the Dazzling Gleam range. But we'll knock out the Braviary right here. So Braviary goes down. Hmm. Weavile should come out here. Yep. <sighs> now we have some questions. To be honest, I could see a fake out. Okay, so I could see two plays. He could go for a fake out into my Kartana. He could go for fake out, uh, Thunderbolt, or he could go for Throw Chop. I'm kind of expecting Throw Chop. Hmm. Should I just stack my Kartana? What's his back Pokemon? Yeah, I really don't need Kartana, do I? I'll just stack Kartana right here. I'll go for a Leaf Blade into Tapu Koko. If I get it, that's great. If not, I could go out into my Marowak the following turn. So we'll protect the Milotic right here. So we'll probably see Throw Chop. It's actually fake out into Milotic. And Dazzling Gleam. He was anticipating the Marowak switch, but not the right slot. What's interesting to note is this Weavile is faster than Tapu Koko, which is very smart. It is Life Orb Tapu Koko. We will get the Leaf Blade off. Oh man, that does so much damage. What's interesting to note was his Weavile was actually faster. Then his Oh no, I know. It wasn't confirmed faster. Right. Because he went for Fake Out. <sighs> I'm stupid. Okay, so... I think a safe place to withdraw my Lodic and go for a Sacred Sword into the Weavile because Weavile is the threat. I don't think you target my Lodic with the Throw Chop. I think you target Kartana with the Throw Chop. Unless he's going for Throw Chop Dazzling Gleam, I don't really think that would be a play. Is we're gonna see the Protect from Tapu Koko, which is fine. Are we going to see the attack into my Lodic? So we're going to see the Throw Chop. It is going to go into Kartana, which is kind of what I expected. So Kartana will go down. Tailwind does Peter out, which is nice. We can go out into my Milotic right here. Yeah. Very safe. And... To be honest, I'll just Scald the Weavile. 
go for the protect i don't see anything wrong with this play uh, tapu coco is life orb we did confirm that so if it wants to go for a dazzling gleam last ditch effort he would be uh, taking it he would have knocked himself out to the life orb recall and we break the weeball sash we're gonna see the tapu coco withdraw so maybe Cartana's coming back in it's actually arc oh boy beautiful beautiful <laughs> So we're going to get the competitive boost, which is beautiful. We will protect our Marowak. I'm guessing throw chop into Marowak. Oh, it's actually going to be the Milotic. Shoot, he got a crit. That crit actually changes a lot. No burn on the Weavile either. Okay. That, that crit actually really sucks for me. I guess I'll recover with my Lodic right here. Switch on to Salamence. Ah, oh, that crit sucks for me. Well, then again, the Skull Sprite sucked for him, so I guess it's fair. So I'll go on to Salamence because this will be able to intimidate both his Pokemon. I'll be able to live with Drochop. I won't be able to live a Flamethrower combination, though. He actually goes for the Icicle Crash, and it will target down my Salamence. Yeah, good play by my opponent. I, I respect that play a lot. So Salamence goes down. Oh, it's Wild Charge. Well, I was assuming Wild Charge, but I didn't think he would actually... Alright, I was not expecting that. I was not expecting the Wild Charge. Uh, oh, wait, 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 we were in Electric Turn. That's why. Okay, so I shouldn't have switched down to Salamence there. That was my mistake. Yeah, it seemed like a safe play to me because we would have been able to keep our Marowak, which would have been key for the matchup against the Tapu Koko, but that was not the play. My opponent really making the plays. He really deserved that game. Uh, I'm kind of frustrated myself because I could have just sacked Marowak right there. Went for the Scald into um, the Weeba and been in a pretty decent position. Because if he iso crash the uh, Marowak, yeah, if he iso crash the Marowak, um, to be honest, I was kind of expecting a Drow Chop and uh, Drow Chop plus uh, Flamethrower combination to my Lodic. I think that would have actually been able to pick up the knockout. Oh well. And I can't say it was the crit. I mean, yeah, the crit mattered, but he would have probably been able to knock out my Lodic turn one with that Supersonic Sky Strike if I didn't burn it. So, you know what? We'll take it. We're going to play one more game, though. I am really liking Salamence, though, on this team. Salamence has just given me so many more options with switching. And I definitely want to test out Crocodile next, because I think I'm going to try Crocodile out on the next episode because I do want to see how a ground type would do on this team because uh, Tapu Koko has been a bit of an annoying issue. We only had our Marowak to really deal with it. As we're going to find Grizzly with the team of a Rangaroo, Mudsdale, Tapu Lele, Torkoal, Vikavolt, and Porygon too. So, very interesting team. He doesn't exactly have the counter to um... Wow. He does it. He's full Trick Room, other than Tapu Lele. I'll lead Salamence Cartana since I think it's a pretty safe lead against my opponent's team. Uh, Marowak does pretty well against my opponent's team, and I'll have Hariyama because I do have Wide Guard. I don't really need Nine Tails in the matchup. Sure, Hail kind of helps against Torkoal, but I don't want to switch in Nine Tails to an Eruption anyway. My Loaded could help wall my opponent's team, but I just don't want to deal with that Beakable. Although I did bring Marowak, but I still think Hariyama's better because knockoff is going to help. It also is able to knock out the Porygon too, which is a huge, huge development. Luckily, his Trick Room team doesn't have anything that can help against... Um, he doesn't have a counter against... Uh, he doesn't have like Intimidate. He doesn't have like Fake Out to help support the Trick Room. So it's kind of hard for him to guarantee Trick Room up. Because I'm pretty sure Devastating Drake plus either Night Slash? No. Wait. Yeah, Night Slash is stronger than Leaf Blade or Sacred Sword onto Porygon 2 would help. 
We'll see how this goes. Yeah. Ah, man. I'm so excited, guys. It's Christmas break. It started. I'm testing out a bunch of things for my midseason. I can't wait to soak up everything I can for the next week for Pokemon. I'm just going to be playing, testing out a lot of new theories, new teams, stuff like that. I'm excited. So we get our Intimidate off first, which means that he is not a Choice Scarf Tapu Lele. Good to know. Trace. Uh, the one Trace for you gun too, and he gets the Intimidate. That, that affects my game plan so much. That affects my gameplay so much, because I might not be able to knock out the Porygon 2 with the Sacred Sword. Uh, Drake... Dr this <coughs> Devastating Drake combination. I don't really need to pay attention to Lele, but I have to get rid of Porygon 2. That sucks. That actually sucks. So we should see Tapu Lele either go for the Moonblast or it's going to go for a Protect. It's probably those two options. Unless he has sub, maybe go for sub here. We're gonna see Tapu Lele withdraw. I'm guessing Torkoal. Yeah, Torkoal's fine. Alright, so Torkoal gonna bring out the Drought. That sucks. Sacred Sword, probably 40%. I don't think Devastating Drake will knock it out. Maybe if, it was, if I was Specs Draco, I would have been able to knock him out. I could have targeted the Lele style with Devastating Drake. But I didn't think he would actually switch out the um, Lele here. Since it was in a decent position. We are going to get the Devastating Drake off. We'll target down the Porygon to... Yeah, that Trace is really sucking right now. Trick Room is going to come out. That's very bad for me. We will just protect... Salamence here will switch out into Marowak. We might see just a free recover and uh, eruption here, but <sighs> nothing I can do. Kind of sucks the 50 50 with Trace. And you don't really see Trace because it's an ability that could actually screw you over a lot with weather and terrains and stuff like that. So we're going to see the eruption come out. How well can Marowak can even take? It takes half. And yeah, we'll see the recover. So I could have went for the Draco Meteor, but again, I think it was too risky to take that. I guess I'll just go for the Draco Meteor now into Torkoal and they protect. I want to free switch in into my Hariyama because I do have Wide Guard on the thing. Wide Guard would be pretty good right here. We're going to see the Eruption. I'm guessing an Ice Beam or he might have Shadow Ball. Well, he should just go for the Ice Beam into Marowak anyway. Eruption doing a lot of damage. We will see the Ice Beam. It will target down my Salamence. Again, it's getting uh, pretty unfortunate. I have my Hariyama though. I can go for a Wide Guard. So the Torkoal should be basically rendered useless. As it can really only go for like a single fi type Fire type attack. Which they don't really carry. So I'll Wide Guard Flare Blitz here. Need to hope that I can knock at the Porygon too. If he has Fire Blast, Overheat, or Flamethrower, this will be a problem. We will Wide Guard here. Yep, he just goes for Eruption. Okay. Porygon 2, how fast is it? Goes for the Tri-Attack. I, I will take that. And we'll get the Flare Blitz off. This is boosted in Sun. You should not be living this. And the Recall, we should be able to live the Solar Beam from Torkoal. Yeah. So unless he has Flamethrower, which I kind of doubt, I think he would Heat Wave. I think we're in a decent spot. Oranguru might come out if he has it. It's actually Beakable. This is an interesting position. Well, there's one more turn of Trick Room left. He can go for an Electric type move. What is this Beakable going to do? I'm just going to... No, I'm going to protect Wide Guard. Alright, he doesn't switch out into his um, 
Tapu Lele, which is fine. We're gonna get the wide guard off. Let's see what this Vika Volt can do. Solar Beam's gonna come out, and I'm guessing that's gonna target down my Marowak. Unless he's targeting down the Hariyama. Oh, he actually does target down the Hariyama. Which is fine. Bug Buzz is gonna come out, and it will target down the Marowak. <coughs> Sun disappears, which is great for me. I can go for a close combat. And I think a Flare Blitz to Vika Volt. Because I don't think he's going to go for Eruption. He really can't go for Eruption here. I do have a save Wide Guard. But I will just Flare Blitz here into the Vika Volt. Pick up a Knockout. Yeah, Vika Volt goes down. I'm pretty sure that the Marowak goes down. It's just a question of... Um, how much does close combat do to Torkoal? If it does about 50%, I'm pretty good with my position here. But if it does less, that's nowhere near where I wanted it to be. We will see Heat Wave come out. Will this be able to knock us out? Frick. Frick. I should have just wide guarded. Ah. Uh. Ah, uh, that's game. I should have just wide guarded. I needed to KO Vika Volt because Kartana couldn't beat the Vika Volt 1v1, and I needed that. I went for close combat because I was hoping it would be a 2 KO. I was not expecting the Heat Wave to knock out. But yeah, one chance, and that's Crit to Torkoal with Night Slash, and I don't think Crit will knock it out. A Crit will knock it out. Torkoal has such high defense. Yeah. Alright, uh, we're going to see the Z-move from Lele. I think that would just knock my Kartana out. So, <sighs> Wide guard would have been the play. Yeah, if he had Heat Wave, Eruption, Solar Beam Protect. Yeah. Ah, that's foolish of me. And I'm actually feeling really bad about that. That's a knockout. Yeah. I feel pretty bad because I had a 100% win condition by just going for the wide guard. But I ended up not doing that instead. Oh well. To be honest, I thought he might have had a chance if he didn't make that play. I thought what he could have done was switch out Vika Volt, go out into um, Tapu Lele. Because Vika Volt can 1v1 the Kartana. Plus the Hariyama because it doesn't take too much damage. And then um, the fact that Torko couldn't really do anything. But then again, I guess he was worried about the Boomerang combination into his uh, Torko. So I guess that makes sense. Ah, wide guard was the right play. I'm beating myself over that. But we'll get better. I should have uh, analyzed the situation better. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you guys did, leave a like down below. Show your support by checking out my social media. Don't forget, I am streaming on Twitch more often. Check out my Twitch channel. Be sure to give it a follow. As well as my Twitter. You guys can check out my Patreon page if you want to check out paid rewards. If you missed an episode of VGC Back-to-Back -back 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 Battles down below. I don't know why my mouth was like, Ugh. Um... Also, if you want to try out the team, down below, I've added the Salamence over to Porygon 2. And otherwise, yeah, I'll see you guys around in another video.